So it's the new year and today I'm back with Dale from Affy Projects and he's going to be showing us a magnificent about to be Passive House certified home. Yeah, that's right, John. We're in the process of doing the documentation at the moment. Nice. Finished the build about 18 months ago. Yeah, the, uh, the client's been living in it and loving it and enjoying the thermal comfort of a Passive House. Yep. And I think what's really important to say today and to have you guys down here today is to just note that this is kind of a fairly conventional build yeah. um, using Australian building techniques with some really cool European products, some really cool European technology. Yep. It's not different in the sense that it's designed and built in a really similar way to most of the Australian building stock with a lot more diligence and attention to detail. Yep. But Especially with the air barrier and the thermal barrier, right? Of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So continuous thermal break around the external envelope of the building. And it doesn't matter what we're looking at in the finishes, the air barrier is all hidden behind everything. Yeah, absolutely. So suspended ceilings, um, battened off internal linings, and all of those battens have nail protection tape behind them, so we're not, we're not penetrating the air tightness layer. So really taking a lot of care and attention to detail, but a, a, as you just touched on then, the design, at the end of the day, you wouldn't know that this is a passive house just to look at it from the right. exterior. It's, it's a, a really nice design, um, a, quite a unique design, yeah. but a, a coastal design as well and something that fits in with the Australian coastal environment. We're only about a kilometre and a half here from the coast. We've got the tea trees all around us, so it's a house that's sympathetic to that environment but a house that also offers an environment, an internal environment, an internal atmosphere, vastly different to the external atmosphere because it does stay you know, in the range of 19 to 24 degrees, Jeez. day in, day out, yep. 365 days a year. So. Which is unheard of in the conventional Well, world. it's becoming more heard of though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well, well it's unheard of in the conventional sense, but correct. it's becoming more known because there's more passive houses being built and there's more energy efficient buildings being built. And at yep. the end of the day, that's that's what's important. Um, and that's what's gonna help the build environment. It's gonna, what's gonna help our our whole environment is if people actually build energy efficient buildings and put their money and put their investment yep. into ensuring the envelope yep. and the building performs as well as possible and uses as little energy as possible. Correct. And managing moisture and Yeah, humidity. of course. Of course. Yeah. So beyond obviously the simplistic way to look at it is insulate as best as you can, mm -hmm. make the building airtight, use as minimal amount of energy as you possibly can. So yep. in in the same sense that a Instead of boiling a kettle every time you want hot water, you boil it once and put it into a thermos yeah. and that thermos, you know, retains the energy. It's essentially what we're doing here, but obviously it's a bit more complex than that because you have to start thinking about the hydrothermal performance of the building and how it interacts with external moisture, internal moisture yep. and controlling. And, and that's what Passive House is, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's engineering a solution to the hydrothermal performance of the building. Yep. And all this glazing has to take that into consideration too, right? Absolutely, yeah. Spectacular glazing. Yeah, yeah so beautiful um, tilt turn, lift and slide, European timber windows and doors. Yep. Uh, timber aluminium windows and doors. Yep. How did you guys put this guy in? We craned that into position. So wow. on this site, we were really lucky that we have a vacant block behind us, or we yeah. did have a vacant block behind us. Yeah, it's um, building So it, we were yeah. able to get a crane up. We, we, Checked with the neighbours there, obviously, and they were yeah. kind enough to let us bring a crane truck in to be able to lift this into position. These windows and doors are all certified Passive House as well, so we specifically bought them from a European manufacturer out of Austria who who does all certified mm -hmm. components, mm -hmm. um, which was really cool. Makes the certification process a little bit easier, mm. which to the client here, they're, they're not concerned about the certification, but for us, it's mm. kind of a nice little feather Ooh. in our cap. So totally. Triple glazed. Low E glass. It's yeah. like a mobile wall. How about your uh, heater here? How often does that get used? Yeah, it's a it's a pallet <laughs> heater, an Italian pallet heater. It doesn't go on a real lot. Like probably, I think the client was telling me last time we spoke, maybe an hour or two every few days. Um, just just to bump it up from. Um, she's pretty keen on the house being 23, 24 degrees in winter time. So. I think what you'd find though is that it'd be 23, 25 degrees with this running with all the doors and windows open. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It doesn't take long to, to make it sort of uncomfortably warm in here. And, and we generally try to encourage our clients not to go down the path of combustion heaters because they are overkill in a passive house. Yeah. But 
a lot of people still like the ambience of a flame and sitting around a hearth and that that comfort feeling of comfort I suppose that it gives people so yeah we don't like to discourage it too much <laughs> no so um so is CLT still the answer <laughs> <laughs> what do you do what did you do with your air barrier here so air barrier we use SIGA components in this in this project as I said structural frame and the, the frame is built in, in a conventional Australian way, the same as any other um, stick frame is built in Australia. We have some reverse brick veneer in some sections in this house. The air tightness envelope simply is installed on the inside of the structural stick frame and then... So on the other side of this brick wall you've got a, a wrap which is giving you yeah, air tightness? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Awesome. And then on the outside of the structural frame we've got yeah. timber fibre insulation and yeah. a weather tight layer as well. What is the What insulation did you use throughout here? This one was Gutex, I believe Gutex, it was. Again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Same as the CLT build. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The owner here obviously has a small, small pup, so yeah. likes it to be able to come and go as it pleases. So yeah. it has a wears a little dog collar with a little sensor on it and um, picks it up as it wants what to come amazing. and go. So How good yeah. That? Obviously all sealed, mm. thermally broken. Yeah. <laughs> Great, great little doggy door. Incredible. <laughs> the concrete slab, how has that been dealt with? What's become our standard concrete slab now, I suppose, fully insulated XPS, essentially a commercial slab, a suspended slab. It's quite an economic way of doing it. So it's just a burnish finish. So it's finished on the day that it's poured. Come back and do a sealer on it um, later, in, a, a buff and a seal on it later in the project just to get the finish up to it. 80% of it's finished on the day in the, in the burnish. Yeah, it makes it a reasonably cost effective solution to the floor and it stays really comfortable you know like you're talking sort of 18 19 degrees all winter yeah. 19 20 degrees through the summer so <laughs> it regulates yeah. the, the thermal temperature of the house quite nicely too so you've got a false ceiling here and that's obviously for all the ductwork for the ventilation yeah, system, yeah. which we'll so, move on to next yeah you can see there's a ventilation point a supply air point there yep. in the living room another one over in the bulkhead over the, over the other side but yeah this is suspended ceiling okay obviously a nice feature of the the house Australian hardwood um, to the ceiling so yeah fully suspended ceiling with all the ductwork running in that and obviously just transfer that down into the the pelmet for the curtains and blinds a lot of the features through the house a lot of the, the design features like the hardwood reveals and yeah. hardwood arcs and skirts and you know follow that through into the joinery as well so I think again just reiterating that point that a passive house doesn't have to mean a certain design it doesn't no. have to look like a certain building you know it, it can be architecturally it can be anything essentially it comes down to the engineering and the hydrothermal engineering of the building and integrating that into the design so it, it takes a, lo a lot more forethought and it takes a lot more diligence in design in the same way that it takes diligence in the construction you know i think we've we're, we're starting to get a really good feel for how we approach that yeah we really enjoy that element of it as well it's it's really nice to be able to design you know, from an engineering perspective and an aesthetic perspective. Let's have a look at the ventilation system. Yeah, for sure. Now, there's a bit of talk about bushfires at the moment here in Australia. Yeah, that's, that's so unfortunately can, quite a bit happening, isn't it? Yeah. Can, can this um, help us managing how much smoke goes into our homes? Well, it can. I mean, it filters all air. Look, I haven't been in a building in a passive house building in a bushfire as yet. Hopefully I never will be and yeah. hopefully no one else will be. Yeah, certainly all the incoming air is filtered. At the moment we've got it set to bypass, so it's just bringing in fresh air without any heat recovery in it at the moment because we've got pretty ambient temperatures here. Um, I think we've got about 21 degrees outside at the moment and 22 degrees inside, so it's kind of just filtering air for air. Yeah. But yeah, of course, it's it's doing a great job of, mm. of keeping the indoor environment clean mm. and indoor air quality top yeah. notch so good for asthma good for, for hay asthma. fever yeah yeah absolutely and let's have a look at some of these rooms that are exhausted and then we can move into an air tightness test yeah cool it'd be great to this would be the third test on this house won't it i know John? there's your exhaust point in there for one of the bathrooms in this wonderful home yeah this is a powder room in there so obviously all wet areas yeah, and yeah. laundry areas powder rooms are all exhaust areas and these beautiful Tilt and turns. These doors are just out of this, off yeah, the planet. They're great, aren't they? And they just close like a safe. Yeah, 
the, the hardware is, is, is brilliant. Yeah. You got how many seals? One, two, three? Yeah. Three yeah. seals on these. Isn't that crazy? As I said, they're all certified passive house doors here. Yeah. So you can still have all your recessed lighting again. The yeah, air exactly. Is behind. Yep. So, so it's all the superficial ceiling, yeah. all suspended ceiling. So your smokies, your recessed lighting, none of it leaks because it's all it's inside. It's not part of the airtightness envelope. So. That's right. Which all of our conventional buildings have. So Dale, let's do an airtightness test. Yeah, let's uh, get it done and see how we're looking, John. Let's Hopefully see we're... if Sigur is the answer. <laughs> Well, we're, I'm not in the business of uh, selling products. No, case, no. So. <laughs> How are we looking? Dale, we're looking really good. In yeah. fact, better than the actual test that we did. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because I just looked that up before and we had 0.33 as the official test yep. result, yep. which is on its way to the Passive House Institute in Germany. Yep. So what are we looking at today? 0.26. Yeah, right. Wow. All in all, I think this is also the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being diligent and working hard and just making sure that no one penetrates the airtightness layer.